Oh no, Mr. Unfunny Dino Guy is gonna be a killjoy again. Well, it's my channel, I can do what I want. As long as I don't spawn a hate them looking to stalk me 24-7. So here we have Chippendale Rescue Rangers the movie. It's not a reboot. It's a com- it's a reboot. It's a fictional timeline of the show was within a different universe. It's a reboot. Boy, I'm not starting out nicely, aren't I? Now, when it comes to the original Rescue Rangers show, I liked it fine enough. Not as much as other Disney afternoon shows like Gargoyles, DuckTales, or Darkwing Duck, but it's something I think kids will watch and enjoy just fine. At least, more than this abortion. But when it comes to the movie itself, my expectations were set pretty low. Not based on the idea of the show getting a spin-off movie, but because of how it was flexing on other properties featured in it. That kind of stuff is really hard to swallow, especially after movies like Ralph Breaks the Internet and Space Jam A New Legacy he murdered any positive influence it could have gotten, but I wasn't going to be completely against it. Still, I had some hope the movie might turn out okay, because unlike my idiotic red stick figure self, I'm willing to give anything a chance if its concept is executed fine enough. And I can say right off the bat, it is better than the likes of Tom and Jerry in A New Legacy. Doesn't save the movie though. I'm honestly a bit shocked the movie got such positive outcry on social media and all I read was it was about all the references featured. Not once did I hear anyone say if the story was good or if the characters were on point. Nah, it was all about them references, baby. All of them. And when looking at the former details in hindsight, I'd be lying if I said I didn't see why. So the plot is about Chip and Dale living in a society where cartoon characters live amongst humans and go on to live separate independent lives after their show is cancelled. But after it's reported that a lot of cartoon characters have gone missing and turned into bootlegs, the chipmunks must join forces again and figure out who did it. So yes, what we have here is a mystery plotline that forces Chip and Dale into cooperative detectives to figure it out. And that's one thing it at least has going for it more than Tom and Jerry, and that it actually focuses on the titular duo and their dynamic, even if it is the typical best friend become bitter rival shit that Dick figures the movie failed miserably with. But I wouldn't say it was handled bad. It's predictable for sure, but it has its moments at least. However, I would find the story at least tolerable if I could embrace the good writing and decent visuals, but I can't commit to it for Rescue Rangers because aside from a cool setup, almost everything about the movie doesn't work for me. Rewatching it for this video, I actually forgot how painfully unfunny it is. A lot of the jokes resort to, hey, remember this thing that was universally hated? We're making fun of it, so that automatically makes it funny. Okay, I did kind of like this one gag where Seth Rogen's character has lifeless eyes as akin to Polar Express, which was great considering they made fun of a movie that I hate, but aside from that, almost every attempt at this type of meta humor falls flat on its face. I'm extremely picky with meta humor. To me, if you want to make it funny, make it subtle enough to fly over people's minds, but don't bash it on the head expecting audiences to laugh. And nowhere is this more present than with Ugly Sonic. I'm not gonna lie, seeing him hog the movie with this forced meta joke might just be the cringiest thing I've seen all year round. Well, next to the unfunny twerking pandemic. Movie. My letterbox review became my most popular because of my jab at this take. It's one thing to have it as a background gag, but he literally serves importance to the story, and I found that extremely distracting. Not all the references were bad, though. It was almost surreal to see DreamWorks characters show up in a Disney movie, considering their long rivalry, but still. I also love the fact that they confirm Paw Patrol attacked this lady cop, and if you know that dogs are often euthanized for attacking people, this universe technically confirmed that the Paw Patrol within it are dead now. Great! I don't have to think about them ever again! The animation is really inconsistent. When it comes to CG, it looks fine, but the 2D stuff looks horrendous. They've tried going for that Tom and Jerry style of animating 3D characters with cell shaded 2D archetypes, but the execution looks really sloppy. They either should have animated them in proper 2D, or just have everything look CG. The claymation style looks pretty cool though, and they even have puppetry used at one point. I'm just saying though, Disney, you had a real missed opportunity to put a Muppets cameo here, and you fucking wasted it. You cows. Let me preface by saying that I don't have a problem with celebrity voice actors as long as they can bring something interesting or fun to the role, but John Mulaney and Andy Samberg just sound bored for most of it. But by far the one thing that angered me the most in this movie, weirdly enough, was the villain. Making Peter Pan the main antagonist on paper sounds competent, but when you research what happened to his original voice actor, it left such a bad taste in my mouth. He was successful for voicing Peter, but when he got older, Disney didn't want him to work for them anymore, then he was ridiculed at high school for voicing him, and eventually died from a drug overdose, saying that they threw him out like he was nothing. Which is exactly what happened to Pan in this movie. Look, maybe it was a really unlucky coincidence, but if Disney knew about it and went with it, 
shame on them. Why not have the villains of the movie be the actual people who make bootlegs in the first place for cheap profit and manipulation tactics? It would still fit well enough with the story that you're trying to tell, but I suppose that wouldn't have been as interesting or controversial. Now that you can tell by the tone of my voice, I really didn't like this movie. Which is a shame, because the seeds were there to make a competent, well-rounded, generally fun movie. But when your same movie has decisions like this, and meta humor so apparent you'd get a migraine from being reminded of it 24-7, it's really hard for me to find much value in watching it. When instead I can just go re-watch Roger Rabbit or even the original Rescue Rangers show, which is probably what most of you should do if you're interested. Good on you if you enjoy this movie, I'm not one of them. But hey, I've got a new Yoshi game to look at later this week, so maybe that'll cheer me up. <laughs> oh, how I wish.